Hey, what is going on guys? This is FTV here for FTV Productions, of course. And uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to model a Pokeball inside of 3 Studio Max. Now, the original idea was from iDigital Studio. If you haven't, go ahead and sub him. He's a great guy. He's got some pretty cool tutorials and intros. Uh, definitely worth the sub. So, uh, well, what he did was he did uh, the model the Pokeball inside of Cinema 4D. But... Uh, I don't actually know Cinema 4D and I've never used it so I don't know if it's any good or not. Um, it looks good because of the creations by other users. But I prefer to stick with one 3D program and in my case that is 3 Studio Max. So I'm going to be doing that uh, using 3 Studio Max. Uh, uh, I am going to you know, use the same techniques that he did so that the tutorials are kind of compatible and stuff. Okay, so um, let's start right away. Let's not waste any more time. Uh, do note that I'm going to be doing that using V-Ray uh, because I'm more comfortable with V-Ray. But um, if you, um, I mean, you want me to do a tutorial on how to do that in Mental Ray, uh, we're going to be doing that. So, um, so what we'll do, uh, what we're going to be creating is a scene, some something like this. And when you hit Render here, uh, note that I'm using a V-Ray. So we're gonna get this very cool looking Pokeball here. Okay. And uh and that looks uh, that looks pretty cool there. Okay. Um this is what we're gonna be creating. So I'm going to save this and then hit reset. Okay. The first thing that we're going to do is uh, create a sphere, of course. And we're going to create it anywhere in the scene, just about here. Okay. And uh, before we do anything to the sphere, I'm going to hit F4 to make uh, sure the, the grid lines are visible. And uh, one more thing that you need to make sure is <clears throat> that these lines, they intersect at the very center here, somewhere here. So make sure that point is above and not here. Um, that actually allows us to remove polygons more easily later on the tutorial. So, what you want to do is, if you click the Select and Move, it actually activates the uh, <coughs> Select and Move gadget. But if you right-click on that, it's going to show you the Align uh, dialog box. You know, right-click next to X, next to Y, and next to Z. That does it. It uh, zeroes them out, and essentially, your sphere is now at the very center of the of the composition or of the scene. Okay, let's go ahead and go, in, <coughs> go inside of Modify Panel and um, increase the number of segments. Now, uh, what we're going to do basically is convert this to an editable poly and uh, remove all of these polygons from here so that we're left with a hemisphere. And then we're actually going to be deleting uh, this part here as well so that we're left with something that is less than a hemisphere. And then we're going to rotate them 180 degrees so that we get some sort of space here, uh, which we're going to be converting into that black band as you just saw. So um, if you do it right now, you're probably guessing that the band is going to be too thick and we don't want it to be that thick. So the way you actually do it is by adjusting the number of segments. Now make sure you won't be able to... Uh, change the number of segments later on when you convert this to an editable poly so you have to be perfect for the first time I think 34 um, looks pretty good you can actually go up to 72 and 72 looks pretty good but I'm just gonna stick with 34 one more thing that you need to note is uh, you have to do things in the same order as I do otherwise um, your geometry is gonna be messed up and stuff because I experimented a lot and um, I actually know the perfect order to in order to create a uh, perfect tutorial. Okay, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna stick with 34, I guess. And uh, right uh, before I do anything, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of the sphere. Okay, make it a copy. Uh, we, we're gonna be using that later on, but for now, it's gonna be there. It's important. So <clears throat> I'm gonna select the first sphere again, convert this to an editable poly, and go inside a polygon mode and uh, change the camera to front and then change this from perspective to orthographic okay and then go ahead and delete this from here and this as well okay so that leaves us with something that is less than a hemisphere let's convert this back to perspective and the reason we did that using um, orthographic and not perspective is because if you are in perspective view and you actually move this out slowly you can actually see that the 
part that is close to the camera is actually moving faster than the one that is at the back. And that's what happens in real world as well. The uh, things that are closer to you appear to move faster. But if you go ahead and do that in orthography, it does not detect any Z depth. So, oh, okay. Basically, you can say that the orthographic camera is kind of like a 2D camera. It does not detect the Z depth. And uh, what that does is it, allow, it, it treats the hemisphere or the sphere as a circle or a semicircle and allows us to make selections more easily. Anyways, um, we have the sphere here. Uh, what we're going to do is add some uh, thickness to it. So let's select the editable poly and change, uh, apply, go to the modifier list and scroll down until you see something called shell. Um, that gives us some, some depth here. So the, uh, so the, uh, um, the normal settings or the default settings work well for me. The outer amount would be zero and the, uh, I mean the inner amount should be zero and the outer amount is one and um, that looks pretty cool but whatever you do if you want to tweak it always tweak it using the outer amount and not the inner amount um, because if you do that using inner amount um, the radius of the inner inner radius is going to be affected which we don't want right now <coughs> you'll be understanding that in a minute okay once we have that um, you want to go over to your create panel once again and in the standard primitives you want to go ahead and create a cylinder and uh, what that is going to do is act as a boolean object for the subtraction. Um, you're going to be understanding that in a while. Um, let's go ahead and move this out. You can move it as loud as you want, just so long as it intersects the uh, the sphere. Okay, so that he has something like that. And the size looks pretty good. Uh, before you do anything, when to right click, select, and move, and actually uh, center this up so that its its center is at the center of the and uh, that makes it look more cool. Um, the size uh, looks uh, looks pretty close and pretty cool to me, so I'm going to stick with that. Is uh, select the hemisphere here, and um, okay, and you're going to go inside of create panels once again. Go to compound objects and go to boolean. So make sure the hemisphere is selected, and then you hit click boolean, and I click pick operand B. Select the hem uh, the sphere uh, the cylinder. And uh, boom, it goes away. Just so right click anywhere in the scene to exit out of the creation mode. Okay, so hit Alt Alt W to go back here. And then it's pretty simple. You want to select the top sphere, hit E to bring up the rotations. And holding down Shift, you want to rotate it. Uh, before we do that, actually, let's let's turn on the uh, angle snaps toggle so that we can rotate it in five degree increments. And then rotate it, you hold it down Shift to uh, create a copy and uh, cool now you want to select the second sphere that we created and um, if you right click on select and move center this up what that does is uh, center this up and uh, the way we uh, created the geometry from the very center it actually looks pretty cool okay so that's the advantage okay the basic shape of the po Pokeball is done. I just want to create the two buttons here. So go back to standard primitives, cylinder, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> make it uh, somewhat this size, any any size you want. And uh, inside the high segments, we're going to right click to convert this back to one. And we're going to lower down the height as well. So we don't actually need it to be uh, that you know, huge. And uh, move it out just a bit, something like that. Um, here, okay. That's a bit too out, I guess. That's what I'm gonna stick with. If you actually move it to inside, you can actually see this part, which you don't want. So, just gonna move it somewhere here, okay. And then you're just gonna select that, and holding down R and Shift, you wanna lower down this size so that we create a copy and then just move it out some more okay so the basic shape of our pokeball is done and uh, if you render this out it's going to look pretty cool but right now it's got no materials applied to it before we apply any materials you want to go inside of render setup hit F10 to activate it and we change the assign renderer to I mean it's mental ray renderer right now but you want to change that to V-Ray ADV what that does is if you hit M now uh, it's going to unlock the uh, V-Ray materials. So we're going to select standard here, select V-Ray MTL, 
Change the diffuse to red, of course. Hit OK. Second one is going to be another rear material. Make it white. Don't worry, we are going to be um, uh, tweaking these up to add some very cool looking reflections and uh, all that stuff. And the final render is going to look exactly like the one you saw. So we're going to uh, make it something like dark gray. And then we're just going to apply the materials. So here, and this one has the white, this one has the black. So yeah, that makes our Pokeball looks look more uh, Pokeballish. But you will notice that um, I'm just gonna wrap from here that it's got some weird-looking uh, lines here, as well as on the on the uh, button here. So let's fix that on the button first. So let's go ahead and select this. Go inside of modify. Convert this to an editable poly. And uh, you want to go for the edge. Select any one of these edges, and hit ring. Select all of the edges, and um, go over and hit connect using uh, two segments and you want to pinch them out so that you can actually see one of the segments and pinch them out something like 90 so that they actually close here and tick here then you want to go inside of polygon mode select the front polygon go inside of inset and you want to inset it even something like very small here first something like here one three um, that should look good. You hit the plus button, apply and continue, and then lower down the amount to something that's, that's not even visible. Hit OK. And now, if you go ahead and uh, go inside of subdivision surface and turn on NURMS at F4, you can see that it's, it's much smoother now. It looks much more circular. So, let's go ahead and do the same thing for the smaller sphere. I'll convert this to an editable poly, go to edge, ring, I'm sorry, ring. Oops and uh, connect using two segments, pinch them out select polygon, inset it once is going to be something here and the other one is going to be something here so the second sphere won't matter and uh, change the subdivision surface to use NURMS and hit F4 and uh, that fixes it up so uh, that makes it look pretty good. Um, next thing, we're going to select that, uh, the bottom part, and convert this to an editable poly. We don't need to need, actually need to do that, but uh, I'm just doing it. Okay, let's go ahead and render this out one final time, and we see that all of this is looking pretty good. But still, we need some reflections here, and uh, that's going to make our Pokeball look more realistic. So uh, if we go ahead and F4, or M, I'm sorry, select the very first material, and take the reflect and uh, move it down just a touch so that it starts reflecting some stuff just a bit, something maybe here uh, just so that it doesn't reflect the color too much and then take the reflection glossiness is on like 0.9 so it's very glossy do the same thing for this uh, 0.9 here 0.9 and uh, we can actually go ahead and have a look at the values here, it's 37 Luckily, uh, makes up to like 56 or 60 even, and uh, do the same values here. Okay, and the same for the black. Don't forget the black; it's as important. And uh, point to nine. Okay, next we have to make something to give the reflection. So, when I go inside of our create panel, lights, change that from photometric to V-ray, create a real light. I'm going to use the top viewport to do that and using this. Okay. And let's move it up. Okay. Let's go ahead and group our Pokeball together. So let's select everything in here except the light. And let's go to group, group, name this uh, Pokeball. So we can actually move it easily. And then we're going to rotate it somewhat so that it looks a lot more dynamic. And we can actually move it up or keep it that. It looks uh, bad here but if you render it out it's gonna look pretty cool. Uh, if we enable GI and stuff uh, it's gonna look even better. I'm gonna pause the video here and resume when it's done I guess. Okay so I just noticed um, the reason we're, get, we're getting that huge render time is because the uh, 
the intensity of this is very large, something like 30, I guess. Yeah, its default value is 30. I'm going to lower it down to something like 3 only, okay? And then render it out. It's going to be much faster now, okay? And the reflection, you can see that it was completely white, which is not what we wanted. So that makes it look pretty cool. Also, I'm going to check the invisible box here, um, invisible. And we can actually lower down the uh, side itself even more. So we chain that to something like 1 only. And then we can actually go ahead and duplicate this. So uh, holding down shift, duplicate it down, and make it a copy, and then rotate it 180 degrees so that it lights up the bottom of it somewhere over here. And now uh, make sure that is uh, it should be invisible again because we duplicated it. And then we hit render here. Uh, we'll get those reflections, but the overall image is dark, so we want some uh, ambience. So we're going to go back to our V-Ray light and create a V-Ray ambient light anywhere in the scene. And then when we render it out, it seems to be brighter. Uh, but it's going to look much better when we turn on GI and stuff. So, um, yeah, we can actually get rid of this by turning this off. I'm not deleting that. I might just need it. Um, I just go, I just need to, you just need to uh, experiment and get what you think is correct. So there, and then if you go ahead, and then if you go inside of render settings or render setup, go inside of indirect illumination and turn that on, change that to a uh, light cache, and we can actually show the calculation phase. So current preset high, we made that medium, but we don't need that, that much. Show calculation phase and uh, hit save here and then when we hit render uh, I'm gonna pause the video I guess it's gonna take a, it's gonna take a while because of the light cache and stuff and I'm resume when it's done okay so it didn't, uh, it didn't take so long um, you can see that our image looks much better now but if you take this ambient light you can actually go ahead and change the color to white in this and then hit render that's gonna make it brighter I guess too bright so lower down the color to something like this here. Give it a cool shot so we can see the reflection in render. <coughs> so now, um, as you can see, it's looking pretty good. It's just a light cache right now, by the way. So three pre-passes, and the final render is coming out. Pretty, pretty cool. So yeah, um, this is pretty much it. It's the end of the tutorial. You can actually go ahead and hit M and tweak some of these materials even more to your liking. But I guess this is uh, this is pretty pretty good. And um, <clears throat> uh, in the future, if you want, I can even make a tutorial on how to do this using uh, using Mental Ray, if you want. Um, yeah, I just moved it up. And let's see how that looks right now. So that makes you, uh, you know, smaller reflections. Uh, the closer this is, the bigger reflection you get. Let's make it real close and see how that looks. <coughs> or even close. Let's put it inside almost. So yeah, um, end of the tutorial. Thanks for watching, guys. Go ahead and sub me, comment, like, and subscribe. Sub uh, iDigital Universe. And uh, yeah, uh, you need to uh, play around with this to get the <coughs> right settings. But um, <coughs> uh, I'm pretty satisfied with this. So. Yeah, thanks for watching and I uh, hope you like the video. Please comment, like and subscribe.